as a child, something that was really special for me was being able to go over and spend the night at my grandparents' house. I just love doing that. I, I have uh, some very special memories of sitting on my grandpa's lap and having him read stories to me before I went to bed at night. Now, my grandpa was a big man. He was six foot two and 220 pounds. And he was an electrician, so he had huge, thick hands that he had developed from wiring half the towns in Orangeville. I'm not kidding you. He had been involved in, in helping build these neighborhoods. But I, I remember uh, just sitting on his lap, and I remember the feeling of rest and contentment uh, of being with him and, and being in his presence. Oftentimes, I, I would fall asleep as a child, and, and he would pick me up, and he would take me, and, and he would put me to bed uh, as, I, as I would go to sleep. Maybe for you, as you think back as a child, maybe there was a, a special place or a, a special person that put you at ease, that uh, enabled you to feel rest and contentment as a child. Well, as adults, I don't need to tell you, but we are still looking for that rest and contentment, aren't we? That's something that we still desire on an ongoing basis. And Psalm 131 this morning that we're going to look at points us to that place where we can find true rest and contentment. Go ahead and open your Bible to Psalm 131. If you don't have a Bible, there should be one underneath the chair in front of you. And there's also an outline in the bulletin if you'd like to follow along. Psalm 131 is a special psalm to me. Uh, when I was in the hospital uh, convalescing from my rock climbing accident back in 1996, this was a special psalm that God gave me as a word of encouragement, as a word of hope. So I hope that you're going to enjoy our, our study of this psalm this morning. Let's go ahead and stand together. And uh, it's a very short psalm, three verses. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and read this. King David says, My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. Would you pray with me? God, we live in a, a, a turbulent world. Uh, there are many things that that could get us in a place where we are anxious, where we fret, and yet, Lord, you are with us. You walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death, through everything we face. And God, I just pray this morning that as we, that as we look at this psalm, I pray that you would speak to us. God, I ask that these would not be my words, but these would be your words that you would open our eyes and soften our heart to hear what it is that you want to say to us. And we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Now, I imagine that the Israelites, as they were journeying to Jerusalem for the worship festivals, remember we've been talking about the Psalms of Ascent that they would sing as they were journeying to Israel, I imagine at times they were filled with anxiety. I've talked about before that the journey to Israel was a difficult journey. Israel, Jerusalem, excuse me, the journey to Jerusalem was a difficult journey. Jerusalem itself was up on a high peak, and it was a challenge to get up there, and there were a lot of obstacles on the way. I imagine that this psalm was included in the Psalms of Ascent to remind the Israelites as they made this journey 
that God would be their protector. He would be the one that would watch over them. Well, things are still the same today, aren't they? We are still desiring as God's people, as we make our journey, as we journey through this life, we are still desiring that God will watch over us, that God will protect us. That leads us to our take-home truth this morning. Here's the the main point that we're going to be talking about today. We can live at rest because our hope is in a God who will take care of us. One more time. We can live at rest because our hope is in a God who will take care of us. So with this truth in mind, the question we're going to talk about today is what does a restful posture look like? What does it look like to be people who are at rest because of a God who will take care of us? Three things that I see in this passage. Here's the first thing that we should know. A restful posture is a humble posture. A restful posture is a humble posture. A restful posture is a posture of not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to and not concerning yourself with things that are too great or too wonderful for you. King David says in in the very first verse, he says, My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are are not haughty. Now, we don't know exactly when David wrote this psalm, but we do know that King David had been humbled by the circumstances of life. King David had lost three children prematurely to death. King David had a daughter who was sexually exploited by her half-brother. King David had to leave his own throne because his son Absalom had formed a coup against him. King David was familiar with the blows and the trials of life. So I imagine that as he was writing this psalm, he had these circumstances in mind. He was thinking about these things. He says, my heart is not proud, O Lord. Remember, I've talked about as we've studied this, whenever you see the word Lord in capital, capitalized letters, it's referring to the, name, the personal name of God, Yahweh, the, the name of the God of Israel. This is a very personal prayer that David is offering. He is offering a prayer to the God of Israel that had been with him in good times and hard times. This God had been right next to them. David says, my eyes are not haughty. You know, you can tell a lot about how somebody is doing by their eyes. It has been said that the eyes are the window to the soul. David is saying very clearly that that if you were to look at his eyes, you would not see arrogance. You would not see pride. You would see a humble and contrite spirit. David goes on to say that I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. I imagine that there was a a day in his pride when he did, when he did worry about the circumstances of life, when, when he tried to be in control of every situation I imagine there was a time in his life when he worried about his children. He worried that they would be taken care of. 
I imagine there was a time in his life when, as a king, he worried about every political and business decision that was made. And I imagine there was a time in his life when he consistently asked God, why? Why are you allowing these things? But in his maturity, David had come to a new place in his life. There had been a change in his life. He was still talking to God. He was still praying to God. But he realized that there are some things he will never fully comprehend this side of heaven. Some of us have come to that place in our life where where we've recognized that. We've come to a place where we've recognized that that God is good, that God is loving, but, but as the prophet says, God's ways are not our ways, nor his thoughts our thoughts. And the God, the creator of the universe, does not consult any human being when he makes his decisions. Amen? David had, had come to his uh, place as a, as a father, as a husband, as a king, of realizing that no matter how hard he worked to prevent tragedy, tragedy was a part of life. It just happened. Trials and in difficult circumstances are a part of living in this world. Jesus said something very similar when he said, the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. David says, I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. How many of us could, could honestly say that that this is our perspective of life today. I imagine there are probably a few of us here today that that could say that, that we've gotten to that place in our journey. But I imagine that that if we were honest with each other, I, I imagine that many of us would say that today we still struggle with pride. And we have a very hard time humbling ourselves and allowing God's will to be done. So often, we want to be in control of our lives. And this issue of, of not worrying about things that are too great or, or too wonderful for us, for some of us, worry is a full time job. Amen? If we're honest, we would say we struggle with worry. I come from a long line of champion warriors. My, my grandmother, was a, she was a champion warrior. She could get herself in, in such a place of anxiety where she would become physically sick because of it. And there's been others in my own immediate family that have, have confessed their struggle with anxiety. I guess I inherited that disposition. But you know, when we worry, when we doubt, we forfeit the comfort, the rest, the contentment that God desires to give us. Paul says in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. How many of us this week could say that the peace of God 
has been guarding our hearts in Christ Jesus. And how many of us could honestly say that? Or if we were honest, would we say that, that our minds and our hearts have been open? And that more often than not, we have succumbed to attacks of the flesh, attacks from our enemy. I know I've had my own problems. The second thing that, that we need to know about a restful posture is a restful posture is a surrendering posture. It, it, it's a posture of choosing to let go of negative emotions and choosing to trust in God. That's exactly what it is. Back to Psalm 131, David says in verse 2, But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. Not only had, had David come to a place in his journey with God where he wasn't going to worry about things that were too big or too wonderful for him, but he had come to a place of quieting his soul. Of coming into the presence of God. When we're afraid and we're anxious, sometimes our blood pressure can go up. And, and sometimes when things get really bad, we can start to shake even. I, I have had friends who have struggled with panic attacks over the years, and they have explained to me how scary that is to, to have a panic attack. Maybe you've gone through something like that in, in your life. But King David says, I'm not going there. I'm not going to that place. Now, I do want to make a point here. There are some people who struggle with anxiety disorders. And so for them, just to say, I'm not going to go there, it's not that easy for them. They, they need support of a mental health professional. Somebody who can come alongside them and help them with that challenge that they face. But for most of us, and I say most of us, we can recognize when we are going into that place of worry. When we're starting to get into that place and we can choose to combat it. Well, you say, how do we combat it? How do we fight it? Here's how. We choose to bring whatever situation, whatever issue that we're worrying about into the presence of the Lord. We choose to come and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Because at the feet of Jesus, we will find comfort we will find rest. The sons of Korah who, who wrote Psalm 46, they understood that about God. They wrote a, a psalm that, that really, I, I think, is a prophetic word from the Lord. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. And then, in the very last verse of their psalm, they, they offer a challenge, literally a, an invitation from God himself. Look at what God says. He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. God commands his people to quiet their hearts and minds 
to come into his presence and know that he is a God that controls every detail of this life. And that he is a loving father that promises to be with us. He's wise. He's powerful. He can help us with, with whatever situation that we are currently dealing with. David goes on to, to say in verse 2, he gives us this illustration of a child with its mother. He says, I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. Well, by the grace of God, I've had the opportunity to be a part of seeing all four of my children come into this world and also be a part of raising them. And I have definitely had an opportunity to see that when a child, before they are weaned, they can get pretty fussy around feeding time, right, mothers? <laughs> if you let them, they'll rule the roost. They, they, they want and desire their mother's breast or, or the bottle. And sometimes they can be demanding even afraid that they're not going to get it. But the child that, that has been weaned is a child that, that has come to a place of recognizing that his or her mother is going to provide for them. That, that his or her mother is going to take care of their needs. And that it's going to happen in a proper time. Not necessarily when they want it. It's going to happen when they need it. And that's the image that, that David gives us. He gives us this image that, that he had come to a place as in his relationship with God where like a weaned child, he had come to trust God. He had come to trust God the faithfulness, and the provisions of God. Have you come to a place in, in your journey where you can make that same statement confidently? Several weeks ago, I talked about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul had, had come to a place in his journey with the Lord where he was able to find rest no matter what he was going through. No matter what he was experiencing. You remember I, I quoted Philippians 4, 11 through 13 that, that Paul had wrote from a Roman prison? Let me remind you what he said. He says, for I have learned to be content Whatever the circumstances, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Have you come to a, a place in your relationship with the Lord where you can make that statement confidently? Have you, have you come to a place where, where you are at rest because you know that no matter what you're going through, whether, whether you're, you're in a place of plenty or whether you're in a place of want, you know that God is going to give you the strength that you need to get through. I, I imagine that if you've come to that place in, in your journey it's because you've learned to quiet your soul. You've learned to, to come into the presence of God and be still. And in that place, you have developed the confidence that you know that God is going to meet your needs. He's going to care for you. 
And because of that, you have come to a place of rest with the Lord. The last thing this morning that that we should know about a restful posture, a restful posture is a believing posture. To, To come to a place of rest, we have to come to the place of seeing that our hope is in the Lord and only in the Lord. David says in verse three, he says, O Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. After talking for two verses about his own experience with the Lord, now David moves to a challenge to his people, the people of Israel. And David wasn't only a king, right? David was a shepherd. He was a spiritual leader of his people. And I believe that if David was writing this psalm at the end of his life, I believe that as a loving shepherd, a pastor of his people, he wanted his people to experience the peace that he had come to experience in his own life. The rest that he had found in the Lord. See, Israel could put their hope in a lot of different places. In the past, they had put their hope in idols. In the past, they had put their hope in their own riches, their own material resources. In the past, they had put their hope in men, in political leaders. They had even at times come to put their hope in their former enemies. But David says very clearly, he says, Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. There's a great passage in in Hebrews chapter 4 in the New Testament where another spiritual shepherd is calling the people of God to find rest and and put their hope in the Lord. It was a little bit of a different circumstance. At, At this point, this was a group of Jewish Christians that were tempted to go back to Judaism, go back to the law because they were being persecuted for their faith. That things were starting to get hard for them, and they thought, wow, if this is what it means to follow Christ, then maybe we should go back to the old way of doing things. And the writer of Hebrews, he he has a strong word of admonishment. He says, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. He was referring back to the the disobedience of the Israelites in the wilderness when they turn their back on God. And he's telling these Christians, he's saying, if you go back to depending on yourself and depending on your own efforts, you are gonna forfeit the rest that God wants to give you. He, he wanted them to know loud and clear that if that if they were going to experience rest, that rest was going to come through faith in Christ. But to depend on their own works, they would forfeit the blessing of God. For us living in the 21st century today, we 
we still have this, this dilemma of finding rest, don't we? So many of us are, are exhausted. So many of us are, if we were honest, we, we would say we struggle with anxiety about life. But being able to find rest is directly connected to the question of who are you looking to for salvation? It's connected to that question. Who are you depending on to save you? Now, I'm not necessarily talking about getting a ticket into heaven, though that's a part of it. What I'm talking about is who are you depending on in your day-to-day circumstances to give you the power and the resources to get through this life? Who are you depending on to help you in your marriage? Who are you depending on to help you as a parent? Who are you depending on as a student at school? Who are you depending on with with that person at work that just drives you crazy? Are you depending on yourself? Are you depending on worldly resources? Or are you depending on Christ Jesus? See, like the Israelites, we we could look to worldly things. We can look to idols. We can look to ourself. We can even look to other humans to save us. Or we can choose to place our hope in the one person who will never let you down, Jesus Christ. Amen? Riviera, here's what I want us to go away with this morning as we close. If we're going to to have that posture of rest, if we're going to live in that place of peace and contentment, there are three things that we need to do. Number one is we need to humble ourselves. James 5 says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. And we need to choose to leave the details of this life, those things that we don't understand, Those things, let me say, that are too big for us, we need to choose to leave those things in the hands of Jesus. Let him take care of those things. Stop trying to control your life. And let the one person control your life who has the wisdom and the strength and the power to save you. Secondly, we need to quiet our soul. We need to choose to set aside time to be still. And in that time of quieting our soul, we need to draw near to God. James 4 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Can you, can you be like that little child that, that hops up onto his grandpa's lap? Can, can you take that posture with God on a daily basis? Can you humble yourself? Can you, can you choose to climb up onto his lap and allow him to love you, allow him to care for you? Lastly, we need to choose to put our hope in the Lord and nothing else. 
as I said earlier, there, there is only one person who will 100% of the time not let you down. You put your, you put your trust in your spouse, they're going to let you down. You put your trust in your pastor, he's going to let you down. There's only one person who 100% of the time will never let you down. And that's Jesus Christ. Riviera, my hope and desire for us this year is that we can live in that rest. Like David, we can, we can learn to humble ourselves and quiet our souls. Place in our hope in the Lord. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for this wonderful psalm. Thank you for these wonderful words. God, I, I just pray for each one of us this morning that we would take this to heart. God, that, that this just wouldn't be something that we hear today and is gone tomorrow. Lord, but that this truth this challenge from Psalm 131, I pray that we would take it with us throughout our week this week. And that, Lord, rather than, than being in that place of worry and anxiety and fret, we would choose to lay everything on your lap, allowing you to be in control. If that's your desire this week, if, that, if that's what you're really wanting, if, if you're wanting to, to be in that place of rest this week, I'm, just raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand. If you're really desiring to be in that place of, of rest this week and, and to avoid anxiety, yeah, just raise your hand right now. Thank you. God, you see those hands. You see that desire to, to live in rest, live in contentment. I just pray for these brothers and sisters that you would, would empower them this week, that you would surround them and give them the peace that they need. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.